Do you have little piles of related items all over the surface of your desk, or maybe the perimeter of your bedroom, or maybe all over the house, that are related to projects and routines so you feel like you can't put them away, but you're really tired of all the mess? Or do you ever go to sit down to work on something, and then it takes you 30 minutes just to find the things that you need in order to do the work, and then you're just tired and don't even feel like doing it? Okay, we're going to solve those problems today by talking about support cubbies. I'm so excited, it's going to be fun, it's going to calm your mind, and it's going to help you to feel like you can breathe and have clear space. Hi, I'm April Perry from LearnDoBecome.com, and I wanna help you to organize your mind so you can get totally out of the overwhelm and do what matters most to you. Please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any videos. We are so glad you're here. All right, today we're diving into one section of the Step Command Central, which is support materials. This is in the as needed section. And essentially these are things that you are actively using for current projects or current routines. Now for my support materials, I love to use cubbies. That's what you're gonna see here behind me. And the reason why I love it so much is because it gives me a way to visually and quickly access everything I need and it feels fun and happy. And I'll show you some great ways you can label them, what to keep inside, some alternatives, and how you're actually going to use these will make a difference for you. Okay, let's dive right in. All right, let's start out by talking about how we want to label our cubbies. We wanna decide which category each cubby is going to hold. And you could start out by putting some little sticky notes on the sides or labeling them temporarily to see if that's what you like, kind of work with it. I've done that already, and so what I'm using right now, I already have memorized, it's super simple, but I'm going to give you a little tour of how I label them so you can just see what works with my life and hopefully adapt it to work for you. These are my eight categories for my cubbies. First is personal development. Second is church. Next is our children and Sunny, our dog. Home management is the bottom left. And then the four on the right are learn, do, become, correspondence, temporary projects, and then a holding space. So now that you've seen my categories, you might be asking, well, what do you actually keep inside? So I'm going to tell you. We'll just go one by one and I'll give you some examples and then hopefully that'll spark some ideas for you. Okay, we'll start with personal development. These are things like goal sheets, health notes, mood logs, things where I'm working out my emotions and going over things my doctors have told me. These are things that I'm actively working on every day to be able to grow, be healthy, strong. In the church cubby, it's things like printouts to reference, for active routines, planning notes for activities that are coming up, manuals or items for study, so I can quickly grab them when needed. In my children and sunny cubby, it's things like school schedules, doctor notes and forms, items for projects. Like for example, if my son has badges, we need to sew on a uniform. It also includes brainstorms for goals, specific parenting needs, things like that. In home management, that's where I keep home improvement quotes, family routine brainstorms, written brainstorms for meals, activities, parenting, etc. And some of these don't need to stay in there very long because once we've completed that routine or grown out of that, then we're going to replace it with our active routines. So we're constantly keeping these things clean. In my learn, do, become cubby, it's content ideas, notes from conferences, program brainstorms, things that are supporting my work. In correspondence, I have wedding or baby or graduation announcements that are waiting for me to write cards or attend the celebration, printed letters that I'm batching, cards for specific seasons, and things like gift cards. So they're easily accessible to me. Temporary projects, that's just kind of what it sounds like. These are things like my dad's last Christmas card. So occasionally you're gonna have a project that maybe could fit in like a family category or something like that. But if it requires a little bit extra space and you want to know exactly where to go to get it, having the extra cubby could be helpful. So my dad passed away a couple of years ago and I wanted to do his final Christmas card. I was helping him do them towards the end of his life and I knew what he wanted already. And so I thought, okay, I'll do one more Christmas card and I'll let all his friends know that he's passed away and express our love. 
So there was a lot of you know paperwork. I had his address book. I had you know the printouts. I had all the envelopes. I just had a bunch of things, and I thought, well, I can just keep them in this cubby. So whenever I had time to work on it, I could just pull it out, get to work on it, put it back. All simple. And then it was a beautiful experience. I was able to um, complete for my dad. In the holding space cubby, that's just where I put things, for example, that I want to digitize or maybe just some random things that I don't want on my desk. And you don't want this to turn into something like a junk cubby. So it's something that I'm deliberately keeping in that one location, but I am going to use it as I move forward. So if you're now starting to think a cubby system might work really well for you, then you might be asking, well, where do I buy a cubby or how would I get these in my home? If you go online and just search paper organizer or paper sorter, you'll see a lot of options that look something like what I have here. There's all kinds of styles and designs. I personally got these at Michael's. I've seen them at Hobby Lobby, on Amazon. Um, they're all over the place. Also, if you get the wider ones that work well, like for scrapbook paper, or they're a wider size that fit folders, I do recommend that. When I first started, I just had a simple, it was a little paper organizer. I bought it at Sam's Club and it was great, but it was kind of small and so I couldn't fit a folder in it. So I had to cut off the folder tab and kind of stick it in there that way. And it was fine, but these work really well. The size is great. And then if you have something like a book or a notebook or a binder, it can fit in there as well. So the bigger ones I do recommend, but you can find ones that meet your needs and work with your office or desk space. You also might be asking, do I have to use cubbies to have a command central? No, of course you don't. If you don't like the look of cubbies and you would prefer to use something like just a filing cabinet and maybe one section of the filing cabinet that's organized by you know support materials, current projects, current routines, that's great. You could also use stacked boxes. You could use stacked paper trays. You could put them in a closet. Some people don't want the visual clutter and I get it. So the way I do mine, I actually had a friend come over and she said, okay, use the natural colored file folders. And then I turned the openings towards the back of the cubby so you can't see all the paper inside so this works really well for me but if you don't want to use cubbies you don't have to the point though is that you need one place where you know I can find information in that category and find it quickly when I sit down to work on something I don't spend more than 30 seconds going to find all the resources that way I can jump right in and do my work and get it done and then move on to go be with my family or take a rest or do other service or work that matters to me and that's what I want for you too, because right now, if you're spending any time looking around, moving papers, wondering where you put something, feeling frustrated about it, you're just using your energy in ways that are going to deplete you. So having some kind of a system, whether it's cubbies or boxes or a filing cabinet, doesn't matter what it looks like, but it does matter that it's organized by category, very easy to find, and that you're keeping it for active projects and routines. Okay, sound good? Let's talk a little bit now about digital items. What if you're saying, well, do I have to keep paper copies of everything? What if I wanna go digital? I love that. I actually have parallel <laughs> cubbies in Evernote. That's what I use. We also have some work things in Google Drive or Dropbox. There are so many awesome storage solutions online right now, so you don't have to keep things in paper form. What I do recommend is that you do as much as possible digitally, so, and that would be obviously PDFs, or it would be you know, other photos or scans, keeping things organized digitally still by category, by project, so it's really simple to locate. But the cubby system, these are for those actual papers that you want to be looking at. Not just papers, but like those items, like my son's merit badges I was talking about. Or sometimes it's like, oh, I've got these pictures that I'm going to want to send to my mother-in-law. Great, I could put those into my correspondence cubby. Or I joined an online training that gave me a workbook and I'm physically writing out my vision and my ideas and my brainstorms. There's a lot that you can do digitally and it's great if you have a digital system, especially if it's organized. And I think probably 95% of everything that I work on is digital, but this 5%, really helps me in when I need to mail something, brainstorm something, bring something to a meeting, I'm teaching a class, that type of thing, okay? <laughs> Another reason you might be hesitant to get cubbies or something like that is because you're going to say, well, I buy a whole bunch of office supplies and then I just fill them up with things and then they're just cluttered. 
I see so many people who buy those cute like rainbow stacking trays, the carts or the things that hang on the wall and all these mail sorters or you go to some kind of organizing center at, you know, at an office supply store and you think, oh, look at these cute boxes. And then you just fill them up with things and they have no purpose and then you just feel like you wasted your money and your time. And if you're just nodding your head and you're thinking, that is totally me, okay, then we're going to transition this for you. The whole command central is what helps you with that, but this is a big part of it because you're not just putting a bunch of clutter into cubbies. You're going to organize them, again, by category like we talked about, but then you're going to keep them clean. Now, how do we keep them clean? How do we keep them free of clutter? At first is you can clean as you go. So when you pull something out and you're working on a project and you see, oh yeah, I really don't need these anymore. Let me just recycle those, great. So you can just clean as you go and as you use them, you purge a little bit. Or you can do a periodic cubby clean out. Now I did mine the other day. I hadn't done a formal clean out maybe for two years or so, but it still looked the same. There wasn't that much stuff in there. But I went to do my clean out and I got a pretty good stack of things that I pulled out. And it was mainly things like doctor's receipts. I had physical copies because we were getting, you know, the insurance to repay me for some things. So I had a bunch of receipts that once I'd already received the check from the insurance, well, I don't need to keep those anymore. That's all done. Um, some of it was just outdated schedules. It was just kind of a bunch of like mostly medical or things related to dental appointments, orthodontist, stuff like that. Things we kind of moved on from. So that was actually really nice. It took me maybe half an hour. And as I went through my folders and got everything purged and ready to recycle, I just remember thinking, this is really helpful for me to assess the categories of my life, be able to think about what's really important to me and to be able to feel like I have that focus and these cubbies really represent a lot of where my efforts and energy go. So I think the clean out process is actually fun and rejuvenating and then now I have all these clean cubbies and they just feel happy. And that's how I want you to feel because I know a lot of things can feel heavy, you know? When you're working on health issues, when you're working with your family, you might have a cubby that's like a legal issue or you've been going through a divorce or a bankruptcy. And there might be a lot of emotions that are going along. And so you feel like, oh, not only do I not wanna do this, but I can't even find what I need, I'm stressed. What I just want to um, reassure you with is that when you actually have things organized so you can sit down and get to work, the stress is going to decrease because even though your emotions might still be you know, close to the surface, you're going to be able to look at this information, look at your folders and say, okay, I've got this. I can do it one step at a time. And that's the encouragement that I wanna to offer to you because I know there's a lot of heavy things you're carrying, but this cubby system isn't just, hey, look at a fun way to get organized. It's actually going to solve that problem for you and it's going to give you that lift and that boost. Our closing learn do become invitation is for you to create your own set of cubbies or support materials like what we identified, organized by category, so you have a system that feels safe. When your system feels secure and seamless, your mind is going to be able to rest, you're going to feel calm, and then you're gonna feel more present with your loved ones, with your family, and you're gonna think, okay, <laughs> this is exciting. I want you to wake up excited. I want you to go to bed content. I want you to feel that peace that is possible when your mind knows there aren't just a million things spinning around. So enjoy, let me know in the comments how it goes. I'm thrilled that you're here and please make sure you subscribe, come back, join us here at learndobecome.com. And if you like this video, we've got a couple more here linked so you can check those out and enjoy.